Well, hello, YouTubers. Welcome to a episode of disorganization and uh, mayhem, I guess you could call it. But actually, uh, welcome to this uh, first episode of this old motor. Uh, as you may have seen in the past, I scrapped out, and part of it's still sitting over there. Uh, window air conditioning unit, rather old one. But anyway, uh, I wanted to show you that if you get a motor like this, say you take one out of a unit and you didn't test it, or uh, you find one, you're stuck with three, you got three wires, well four. So you might ask yourself, what am I going to do with this thing? Hit it with a hammer? Yeah, that's a possibility. If you look, hopefully you can see this well. Right here is some of the writing. And uh, there's the diagram that's covered up by rust. You can kind of make out some of the letters on it. It says Fasco Industries. So this is not a, a cheap motor by any means. But after the years, there's a little bit of. Uh, uh, bearing play side to side maybe but anyway if you tear this out of a unit some units require a run capacitor for these motors uh, this one didn't but when you tear a unit apart keep note of the uh, service schematic this one happened to be on the front control panel uh, some of them are in a little uh, uh, plastic pocket folded up and others are folded up and stuck behind the uh, panel here. They can be in a variety of places but when it boils down to it this motor happens to be uh, universal in the fact that <coughs> excuse me in the fact that we got a white we have a red wire a black wire and a green. The white is usually common in this case verified by the schematic it is common so you strip that wire off uh, usually on blower motors even especially with HVAC usually not always usually your black wire is high speed and red is low so what we're going to do here we're going to test this motor out. And pretty much all you need is a three wire cord like this with a ground. And I do suggest hooking up the ground. Because uh, if this motor has any issues or some shorts in it, um, it makes, uh, I don't want to say it, yeah. you're better off. Um, it's safer that way. Well, on this particular cord, I usually try and keep the polarity correct. You can look at your end of the plug, which goes in the outlet this way. Neutral, neutrals on your left, hots on your right, grounds on the bottom. This cord happens to have a black stripe and a rib uh, running down there. So we're going to go ahead and hook that to the neutral line on the motor. Just like so. And we're using recycled nut, uh, wire nuts from that uh, old high pressure sodium light. Now, the first speed I want to check is low speed. Just, just because. You can check high. Uh, some of them may have a medium speed. Now, one important thing. The windings are tied together internally. You got a bare wire here. You don't want to let this wire hang or touch anything else because some voltage does come through it. Tap it off. And then when you're ready, get some power. That pig's giving me problems again. <coughs> Good grief. Anyway. Got our plug, we got our power. There's your motor. 
low speed. But uh, whoever coined the phrase, uh, if it can't be fixed with WD-40 duct tape and a hammer, they need to add drywall screws. And uh, one of the things that surprised me about this motor, being one, how old it is and the fact it still works. Two, is there were two rubber stoppers here. And those rubber stoppers, of course, broke off when I tried to pull them off. Well, this hole's big enough. You take a drywall screw and you stick it right in the center of that rubber plug and thread it in not even a quarter of an inch then use a little screwdriver you don't want to thread it into the metal but once you get it threaded into that rubber which would be about that far you go ahead and take a pair of wire cutters a pair of side cutters and lift up like that you do that a couple times or a piece of copper wire so the screw works better it takes really can't see that but uh, it comes out in chunks but it takes the rubber stoppers out and you can tell the holes are clear so uh, I guess the bottom line I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, these motors are oil it's kind of amazing considering most of today's stuff is them let me go ahead and plug it back in and uh, it's pretty much how you would service one of these motors. I mean, it's vibrating because it's a rigidly mounted motor sitting on concrete. A little bit of bearing noise in it. I'll give it another couple drops. Hopefully it's getting down there to the bearings. Heck with low speed, let's crank her up to high. Make sure it's unplugged and just switch the red wire with the black wire, but don't forget to cap off the unused wires like I once did. Because then you grab a hole, you pick up this wire here. What's this wire for? You know. Now we got high speed. And still, as you can see, it's not a torquey motor. But there you go. High speed, quiet as can be.